Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to talk about this enormous hunk of paper and plastic. It is the Natalie Desse box. Now, boxes devoted to opera singers are rare. They really are. I mean, the complete works of opera singers that contain complete operas. And this is a particular example of why they're rare. Basically, it's because the singer in question is participating in a production with many, many other singers. And they may or may not be the lead role in those productions. And so it may or may not make any sense for fans of those singers to buy these things and get these complete opera sets when their favorite singer is not actually the star attraction in those sets. And this is particularly the case when, as with Natalie Dessay, the singer in question is a coloratura soprano because coloratura sopranos do, of course, have some wonderful lead roles in their lives, but they also have a lot of sort of secondary appearances, and Dessay did a bunch of those too, and they're all here. So I want to take the box apart. Here it is. It's got, let's see, oh, it's, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. It has recitals. It has 33 CDs and 19 DVDs. The 33 CDs include 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 complete operas. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 DVDs. And then some bonus material, which we can get to anon. Now, Dessay has not had the longest career in opera. She's had some vocal issues along the way. She was almost as famous for her cancellations as Montserrat Caballé, but she really is a first-class singing actress. I mean, and that's really what we're talking about. And that's rare in coloratura sopranos. They're supposed to be sort of mindless, twittery songbird things. But she was never that. She always described herself as an actress who sings. And that's indeed what she is. That's why it's wonderful to be able to see her on DVD, because she really does inhabit her roles, fill them out, give them life, and sing with great intelli intelligence. And she does it without sacrificing vocal beauty because she does have an extraordinarily beautiful voice. That's really the complete package. So it's no wonder her career didn't last all that long. It seems to me that opera singers who tend to have the complete package tend to go first because they use it up. They have a limited fund of, of vocal, vocal whatever it is, and the reserves run dry fairly quickly, which doesn't mean she isn't still out there. She is. She sings popular music. She sings jazz and cabaret songs. She sings, you know, she's an actress. She's, she's got a career. I mean, she's a tremendous all-around entertainer, which is what she is, even if she's not always singing opera where the high notes are starting to go. But let's, let's just look at the lovely booklet. Um, and let's see what's inside. Of course, the problem, the other problem with these opera sets, these things devoted to singers, is that they tend to feature zany photos. There's not much you can do with an opera singer because opera singers and classical musicians generally are not always the most photogenic people. To say is an exception, she's quite photogenic. This does not stop them from giving us a photo of her. Um, let me do this this way so you can see it. She's, she's walking the plank here. Um, and seemingly oblivious to the danger that that entails, which is kind of cute. But then, you know, you wind up with these photos that have, you know, lots of singer types with their mouths open. <laughs> you know, I've, I've never found the, the mouth open singing kind of photo to be the most appealing or tempting when it comes to attracting me to these things. But, you know, that's, that's par for the course. It was like, it was like that wonderful period in the eighties and nineties when you could not photograph a string quartet indoors. You always had to stick them someplace like the Grand Canyon or in front of a giant tree or in the middle of a field or, you know, just the place where the music that they played was not designed to be heard. So, you know, strange photos of classical artists are nothing new. And of course, you know, if you look at my most awful album covers in the world series of videos, 
you can see that even more vividly. But let's let's talk about what's in here. First, there's a bunch of recitals. And for me, the recitals are the best things in there because they're the things that feature Natalie Dessay more than anything else. If you're really a fan of the singer, then you want the recitals first and foremost. And the complete operas, you know, I mean, the great as they may be as complete operas, those are secondary in our portrait of the soprano. So let's see, first you get French opera arias, which is just wonderful. It's got like all kinds of French opera arias in it, not surprisingly. I love it when when discs have titles that actually, you know, relate to what the title is. It's just terrific. Then we have Mozart heroines, which are, you know, arias from the, the, the Magic Flute, and Lucio Silla, and Zaid, and Ascano, Ascanio, and Alba, and, you know, some stuff you don't hear every day. Idomeneo, uh, it's good stuff. And that's with the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment under Louis Langre, which is good too. Then we get French opera arias again. Well, there are lots of French opera arias, so there's no reason not to do even more of them. Uh, let's see, Boisdieu, Offenbach, Rossini in French, Le Comte d'Oiry, Donizetti, Gounod, Thomas, so oh, it's all wonderful stuff. Then we have Richard Strauss, Amour. Oh, amour, toujours l'amour. Yes, you've got arias from Ariadne Afnaxos, his Brentano leader, Arabella, and De Rosen Cavalier. All good stuff, really good stuff. Then we have Italian opera arias by Bellini, Donizetti, Verdi, those three, and all kinds of stuff. There's, you know, Lucia de Lammermoor and I Capuletti e i Montetti. A.K.A. Romeo and Juliet by Bellini, Puritani, La Traviata, Maria Stuarda, and Rigoletto. What's not to love, right? And disc six. Ah, this is great. This is Handel's Cleopatra. I think this is one of the greatest discs ever made by any singer in the universe. It's basically almost all of the arias that Handel wrote for Cleopatra in his opera Giulio Cesare in Egitto. Boy, oh boy, is that a great role. I mean, it has eight arias. I mean, it's huge. It's just enormous. And it runs the gamut from sort of opening ditzy bubblehead to scheming seductress to tragic heroine. I mean, the, the role encompasses everything. It's got some of Handel's greatest arias. And boy, does she sing the, the daylights out of them. It's just great. Absolutely great. Fantastic stuff. So that's, I think, uh, just a, a thrilling, thrilling disc. I have it separately. I have it on my iPhone. I mean, trust me, you've got to hear Natalie Dessay sing Handel's Cleopatra. It's one of the greatest discs and smartest discs that any singer ever did. And then we have, let's see, opera arias from various recitals. Okay, well, that's fine. We get, oh, let's see, Candide, Glitter and Be Gay, and Siegfried. She's a like a wood bird, <laughs> and uh, Massenet's Manon, and and Verdi Yvette Brichicciliani, and Rameau's Les, Les Andes Galantes, and some more Cleopatra. So you can't have too many of those. And these are these are wonderful recital albums. I mean, you can look up the reviews on classicstoday.com where our opera guy, Bob Levine, has, has raved about them, and rightly so. I mean, they're thrilling, absolutely thrilling. Then we have complete opera recordings. And here things start to get a little dicier because you got to want the complete opera. First, the magic flute to say is the queen of the night. The queen of the night has two arias and a little recitative. That's the whole the whole part. So you got to want the magic flute. Happily, it's the William Christie magic flute, which is an excellent, excellent magic flute. I'm not going through the cast list of all the other stuff. It'll take forever, but it's a great magic flute, which is a good thing. So let's see. Let's see what's next. Up, ah, the Tales of Hoffman, the Kent Nagano recording. This is also one of the best and most important Hoffmans because of the edition that's used. We don't have to go into that either. But what does she sing? She sings Olympia, but it has different people for all of the different women in Hoffman. So she only does one of them and you have to want the rest of them. And it's like, you know, it's up to you. But it's, again, it's an important recording. It was it was lauded when it came out, and it's it's really quite wonderful. 
So let's see. We got a 4x up, oh, then LACME. And she gets to be LACME. Yes! Finally, an opera where she is the title character and she's out there singing all the time. And I think LACME is a great opera. I am a sucker for LACME. Yes, it's a Western imperialist, very unwoke plot, <laughs> if you really, to get right down to it, because as usual, it's about, you know, cute little Eastern priestess thing in love with hunky white, you know, white Western guy who who dumps her and she kills herself. You know, it's, it's, it's basically Madame Butterfly. That's the plot, which is the same sort of very unwoke Western cultural imperialist thing. I love it. I'm all for cultural imperialism when it's set to such fantastic music. It's absolutely lovely. And this is the great modern recording of LACME. I mean, it really is. There's, there's, you know, the only other competition, there was Mady Mess Play, who was a little more of the classic Twittery coloratura type. And there was Joan Sutherland, who was Joan Sutherland. But this is a great recording of LACME. It's fabulous. Then Orpheus in the Underworld, and she gets to be Eurydice in Italy, or Eurydice in, in French. And that's that's just, she's a terrific comic actress. She really is. Natalie Dessé can do it. And it's hilarious and tons and tons and tons of fun. Then Stravinsky's Le Rossignol, which also was, became, uh, was used as a DVD, which is in here. I think this is a wonderful performance of a wonderful work. I mean, the complete opera, it's like, you know, it's an hour long or less. It's not long. It's fantastic. And this, the DVD is also fantastic. You know, it's full of like computer graphic imagery and, and you know, this sort of reality versus fantasy approach to the thing. It's, it's wonderful. And what a beautiful, beautiful piece it is. It deserves to be much better known as an opera as opposed to the tone poem, the Song of the Nightingale. Then we get Mozart's Mitridate, Ray di Ponto. Oh, look at that, with Christophe Rousset. It's, you know, very, very authentic. Now, Mitridate is one of Mozart's early operas. It has acres of secco recitative and a lot of sort of wild, uh, you know, arias. And she is, you know, this, this Aspasia. That's a, the main female, female role in Mitridate. So that's a good thing, too. And she's quite wonderful. She's also a singer who has adapted beautifully to doing period instrument stuff because uh, I think she has both the artistry and the taste level to handle everything from Stravinsky all the way back, way, way back, way, way back. Handles Alcina. Oh, wow. Well, see, here's another issue. Who's Alcina? Renee Fleming. <laughs> now, Renee Fleming is a terrific Alcina. It's a terrific performance of Alcina. I love Alcina. A great, great role. But she gets to be Alcina's second peg, who is Morgana. And Morgana has a lot to do with Alcina, actually. She gets some of them. In fact, not only does she get some of the best arias to herself, but they're so good that when Joan Sutherland did Alcina, she stole Morgana's arias because they were taking attention away from the prima donna. So Natalie Dessay has a considerable role in Alcina, but who are we kidding? She ain't Alcina. That's again with William Christie. It's a fabulous performance. Absolutely fabulous. Then we get Ariadne of Naxos. Now this is the Sinopoli recording, which is licensed from Deutsche Grammophon. And you know, here she is, of course, Zerbinetta. And Zerbinetta is, of course, a major role. She has the show-stopping aria in Act Two. And, and so there's plenty for her to do there. And she is a superb Zerbinetta. And the Sinopoli Ariadne is one of the great ones. Unquestionably, it's got Deborah Voigt as Ariadne. It's, it's just wonderful. Then we have Lucie de Lamarmor, which is the French version of Lucie de Lamarmor, which is really a recomposition of the opera. It's quite different from the one we know and love in Italian. And she gets to be Lucy, or Lucia. And I, this was a controversial performance. It always was because there are, you know, it's such an iconic work. And fans of the Italian version are just legion. But again, uh, you get to hear Natalie just say in the title role. And she's, she's superb, superb in the title role. Then we have Orfeo. This is with Emmanuel Heim, a very, very fine Orfeo. But she is La Musica. Now, 
La Musica has, again, a big scene, but she ain't Orfeo, and she ain't Eurydice, Eurydice. And so you're asking to listen to a whole Orfeo with eh, only a small bit <laughs> that actually belongs to Natalie Dessay. But you've got Ian Bostridge and Patrizia Cioffi, and oh, it's Alice Coote. It's really a, it's a fabulous Orfeo. But again, Dessay is only a, a soupçon of the total. And La Sonambula, here she gets to be Amina, the sonambulette herself. And uh, this is also, let's see, who's this with? Evelino Pito and the Lyon Opera. And I just, I had such a wonderful opera. It really is Sonambula. It's so silly. I mean, it's absolutely silly. Yeah, we just did a plot synopsis of Dunora. We could also do one of La Sonambula because the difference is that in Dunora, you know, the goat is running across a, a, a log bridge and Dunora follows the goat because she's insane and then lightning hits and they fall into a chasm. Well, in La Sonambula, it's just Amina who is sleepwalking across the bridge. And lightning does not hit the bridge. She actually makes it to the other side. But, you know, crazy sopranos crossing bridges seems to be a romantic trope. And you can hear Natalie to say, do it in La Sonambula. And we have actually Lucia de Lammermoor as opposed to Lucy de Lammermoor. This is the Gurgiev recording. Um, and she's Lucia. And I don't think much of this performance of Lucia, except perhaps for Natalie Dessay. That's me. Uh, others of you may like it better. It doesn't do it for me. Then we get DVDs. Ah, DVDs. Oh, look at this. We start with Arabella. Now, Arabella is Kiri Tekanoa. Not shabby for Arabella. You may love Kiri Tekanoa, but Natalie Dessay is the Fiecker Millie. What, you may ask, is a Fiecker Millie? Well, we have to break that apart because it's one of those German compound things like Alsein-Anders-Zetzung or something like that. You know, it's like lots of things put together. All right, a Fiecker is a horse-drawn cab. They were quite popular in Vienna. It's a hackney cab. You know, where you have a couple of horses and you get it, and it drives you around. And the Fiecker Millie is the mascot of the cab driver's ball and it's the it's the person with whom what's his name you know who i, I never can remember his name yet zidenka no no that's a, that's another female thing but who's the guy the main guy here uh, let's see is con wild waldenauer and adelaide and arab mandrika that's him thank you it's whatever his name is the male lead is flirting with the fiacre millie to make arabella jealous so it's not a big role. It is an obnoxious role. She gets to be twitty and light and obnoxious. And that's her thing in Arabella. It is not a role that allows her to do anything by way of creating a real character. She is only there to irritate Arabella. And since nothing in opera is more irritating than a coloratura soprano, she does this very, very well. But, you know, you're going to have to watch all of Arabella. It's a terrible opera. I'm sorry. It's an embarrassingly bad opera in a lot of respects. We can go into that later as well. Then we get Orpheus in the Underworld, the DVD with Minkowski. And then we get Ariadne of Naxos, uh, the James Levine recording, also with Debbie Voigt and Suzanne Menser. Those people are beautiful, Ariadne of Naxos. I saw those productions. So I can, I can say with, with a certain amount of authority that I was there and they were wonderful. Then we get... Uh, Ambrose Tamos, Hamlet, 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 whatever it's called, which you may want. And then here's the movie of Le Rossignol. And then Massenet's Manon, where she gets to be Manon, and she's a wonderful Manon. But again, here's one of those situations where you have to watch the production, and it's really ugly. It's not, it's not a very appealing production of Manon. And that's true of all these DVDs, of course. You know, you have to put up with what the directors do. And sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. And quite often in contemporary opera, it's a big don't. But the Manon is fine. And La, La Fille du Régiment, ah, she's Marie and wonderful. As Marie, another piece where she gets to display her comic abilities, which are second to none. And, oh, Pelias et Mélisande, and she gets to be Mélisande. Not the world, the, not the world's dumbest opera, but probably the dumbest character 
in, the, in an opera. That was the nomination. There was one of those Met opera quiz things. And one of the questions was who was the dumbest character in all of opera. And Melisande won because, you know, she doesn't know where she is and she doesn't know what she's doing and she doesn't know why she gets married and she doesn't know if she's had an affair and then she dies. <laughs> so and Natalie Disney does all of that with aplomb. She's marvelously, absolutely oblivious. And then we have another Sonambula on DVD. This is the Met Opera production with Juan Diego Flores. And I mean, you know, what's not to love? And La Traviata, where she is Violetta. Oh, this is exciting. And I mean, I've seen these things, you know, like years ago, but I have to tell you, um, I don't usually watch DVDs because I don't want to look at these people. <laughs> I want to see them live in a theater. But I find myself always irritated by the fact that on a DVD, you can only look at what the camera guide tells you you're supposed to look at. You don't get to like turn your attention wherever you want it to be in the course of the performance. And it's for me, it's just terribly frustrating. But anyway, ah, and here's Handel's Giulio Cesare with Emmanuel Heim. This is such a great opera. You got to see the whole opera. It's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. This is a fantastic production of it, a beautiful performance. What a great, great opera this is. It's, it's just unbelievable. We're going to do talks on Handel operas. We are. Trust me, they're coming. Because first of all, I wrote a book about Handel and talked about all of them so I can do them and I feel comfortable with it. And second of all, they're just great, great works. Staggeringly great works. And then there's the Tales of Hoffman. Um, let's see, who is she in this one? She's Antonia, not Olympia which is exciting. You get to see her do another piece <laughs> of the Tales of Hoffman. And then we get DVD 18, Natalie to say greatest moments on stage. Uh, this is their view of those. And it's like, you know, little, little scenes from all the stuff that she did. And let's see, the bonus is the mad scene from Lucia de Lammermore from the Met. And that, my friends, is quite a box of Natalie Desse. I, I, I wish that that uh, there were more recitals. <laughs> I really do, because it's just such a joy to listen to her sing all by herself. And she's quite often better than a lot of her colleagues. But I have to say, as a percentage of the whole, there are many, many, many more hits than misses here. And if you want those complete operas, this is a great way to get them. It really is just a terrific way to get them. I, I, I enjoy all of the stuff that's in here for the most part. I mean, I, some of these Lucia de Lammermoors were okay. They weren't so great. But on the whole, this is really, really fine singing, fine cast, a, a wonderful portrait of a great singer at the height of her career. And, you know, I don't really think you should be able, you should, we should, we should begrudge the rest of it. You can't really ask for more, can you? So keep on listening, folks. It's Natalie to say in a box. Take care.